What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Miguel. You're watching Miguel EDC. The channel where we talk everything EDC gear here. Today we are reviewing this Concept Knife right here. This is the Anomaly from Concept Knives. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design. I've gotten a chance to EDC this knife here for about the last week or so. Thanks to Lefty EDC's knife pass around. So shout out to Lefty. It's been a really good experience because this thing is just in that smallish medium, medium size of knives. And honestly, it's a pretty elegant knife too. Very gentleman, very classic lines, if you ask me. So we're gonna obviously be getting into it. This knife is going to be linked down below if you wanna check out more details. Uh, my aim is to give you all the details you need to know in case you are trying to shop around so you can make an educated purchasing decision if you're interested uh, those links do help out the channel but that is at no extra cost to you without further ado let's jump into it we have let's see overall measurement on this bad boy is going to be seven and a quarter seven and a quarter inches which is not bad it gives medium design there uh length the overall blade length is going to be about 3.2, 3.15. The cutting edge is going to be three inches. I want to say a little bit longer, about the same 3.2, 3.15. The handle is going to be about four, 4.2, 4.15 there on the handle. Some quick size comparisons on this bat boy, or as we typically do with a PM2 right there from Spyderco. It's going to be a larger knife. I want to say this might be more Para 3 territory, and indeed it is, right? Very comparable to the Para 3 on the overall size. Here's a Demco 8020.5. This one is a recent addition to the channel here in the titanium scales. Recently unboxed, it's been a grail of mine here for quite some time, and I'm just excited I finally was able to get it. And here is a shark cub on the slicer blade, smaller brother of the 8020.5, and it's probably, I don't know, the, the anomaly might be somewhere in between the two. If I'm being honest, probably a lot closer to the full size 8020.5, if anything. Here's the Rat Model 1 right there. And of course the Rat Model 2. Probably more Rat Model 2 territory than anything. All right, check it out. Probably a little bit long, longer than the Rat Model 2 by a hair. Here's the CJRB Pyrite Alt button lock. Right, very popular, very recommendable, as well as the Vostid. Raccoon with the crossbar lock 14C28N and honestly it's hanging out with both of them probably a little bit closer to the pyrite size than anything Last but not least here's another concept knife this one we just reviewed in the channel So if you want to check it out after this video, you certainly can this is the concept Integra a JK knife design and obviously this one is a Titanic next to the anomaly right much bigger knife overall here is the concept Corvid S this is a fixed blade version right here so it's just a little bit shorter than the Anomaly. But again, this is just to give you a ballpark size idea right there, kind of where everything falls uh, as far as size and everything. Let's talk materials on this guy. So what materials are we working with here? So we have, these are titanium handles, right? They have been uh, coated here in this nice purplish blue, right? You have the blue steel hardware going on all around to complement the design. As far as the blade, we have an S35 VN satin finish, flat grind, uh, fullback. I want to say this is certainly uh, fullback. If anything, it maybe tapers up a bit, but yeah, there's a little bit, a little bit of belly to it right there, right? Very classic knife designs. If you ask me, you got your finger guard or finger little section right there for your index. The flipper works as a finger guard. And then I have a medium to, you know, medium hands, not the biggest, not the smallest. I'm able to comfortably fit all fingers just fine. No forward choke option on this one, but I feel like you really don't need it because you can have plenty of control on this knife just the way it is by default, which is good. Check it out. Take a look right there. Uh, we have, as far as deployment option goes, you have a flipper deployment. And very similar to the Anomaly, and we talked about this during the Anomaly review, right? That is the only deployment option, mainly because, right, they were aiming for, I'm sure the designers were aiming for more of a uh, streamlined design, one where the blade actually tucks in to the handle completely, right, very slick design. And that's what you have going on here, right, very classic lines, right, straight lines where the blade doesn't stick out all that much. Again, Dirk Pinkerton is the designer on this one. We have machine satin again, we have ball bearings. So it's not gonna be a drop shot, but it will be a little bit of a shake shutter. 
for sure, All right? And get that going there. And let me see, yeah, I can certainly see the ball bearings from here, which will be more of a, you know, a control, a control shot instead of a guillotine shot on the way down. Just not bad. Being a flat grind, this thing is gonna be really, really slicey. We're gonna be doing some cutting tests here uh, later in the video. So you guys can see the cutting performance with some paper and cardboard. And this guy is a frame lock, right? We have a steel insert here on the lock bar for a steel on steel contact. And it is a frame lock going on. Right? I wanna say we have good access to the lock bar from here. And honestly, this might be one of the easiest lock bars to disengage or push out of the way, which in my opinion is a win. That is certainly a good thing. That means you can open and close this knife as many times as you need to, or even fidget with it, and you're gonna be okay, right? I know the knife elites out there are cringing. Oh, why would you fit, fidget with a knife? What are you doing, right? Knives are tools, just cut with them. Well, obviously, obviously that's what knives are for, but you know, it doesn't take away from the fact that you can, as humans, right, we're always, have the urge to mess with the tool, play around with it, right? And uh, that's exactly what, you know, fidgeting with a knife is all about. So yeah, this one makes it very easy to disengage, deploy and disengage. The flipper is a little bit of a, I want say light switch, if anything. Can I fill it? Let me see if I can fill it. You certainly can, but that's if you put no effort whatsoever. As long as you put a decent amount of effort into it, you are going to get it deployed, right? Regardless. So that's good. And the detent here is tuned really, really well. Right, you hear that click at the end. All right, just see enough tension, right, to make it work, which is really, really good. It feels perfect. Boom. Yeah, that's really nice. Check out the blade here, it's nice and aligned. Uh, when I got it, it was a little bit, after a while, a little bit to the right, so I tightened up the pivot and boom, it was back to the center, right there, smack in the middle. So a quick carry profile here next to the Pair of three, so a pair of three is going to be a little bit thicker, right? This guy's gonna be a little bit on the slim side. What about the 8020.5 with those titanium handles? It's still gonna be a little bit slimmer. What about something like the Rot Model 1? Obviously, that's a thicker boy right there. And last but not least, the Raccoon with the micarta handles. I feel like you get the idea there. Length and height on the pocket. Again, this guy's gonna be super, super slim. Same, I feel like, ideology here with the Integra, right? making sure the blade sticks into the handle as much as possible. So if you were to compare it to something like a, a spider core knife, well, obviously the blade is going to be sticking a lot from the handle. Same deal going on with the Demco knives, at least the 8020.5 and slicer. Same deal going on there. So it's going to be a little bit more on the elegant side of things. Check it out here next to the Rot Model 2. So definitely more Rot Model 2 right? overall profile length and height, if anything, right? And last but not least, right next to the raccoon, okay? So definitely sh small, sh medium, sh medium knife, and the profiles go along with it, very elegant, very classic lines. I feel like for a gentleman knife, this one will be pretty, pretty good. If you're looking for a knife that just has, you know, very good, elegant, classic lines, right? Nothing too crazy, nothing out of the ordinary, right? Just nice and elegant classic looking i know i keep repeating myself but honestly that's what comes to mind with this guy uh this is definitely one to consider right? action feels really good i like the sound let me do the acoustics for you guys listen to this yeah i feel like that that opening click that sounds like music to my ears something about the way it clicks when it opens with against the titanium scales feels really really good uh let's do a quick blade stock thickness here right typically let's see uh 0.12 that's what i've seen across the board the integral is also 0.12 it's pretty standard on the industry 0.12 on the blade thickness for edc knives the handle is a little bit thinner than the typical average of around 0.5 or half an inch this one is 0.43 so it's even slimmer from that standpoint, which is nice, especially if that's something you're looking for. Uh, the titanium is nice and milled on both sides, right? Check out all the milling going on here on this side. I right, got some milling going on on the other side as well. And that means the weight on this thing is gonna feel really, really good. It's not the lightest, not the heaviest for its size, right? The titanium helps, the milling helps. So I wanna say maybe like a three ounce Ooh, look at that. I'm getting better and better on this guy. I don't know about you, but uh, listen, I take a little bit of pride. I'm like, okay, I'm guesstimating it close to what the number is. And 2.9, that's as close as three ounces as you can get 
for reference that uh, Integra was 4.2 and the Corvette S was 5.3, right? So yeah, you get a very elegant, like three, three ounces knife right there. Really light, very easy to carry, very elegant, gentleman-like. What else is there to say? Now, this is a quick hardware check on this bad boy. My tools, of course, are highly recommendable. They're part of the Strabito tool set and they're linked down below, right? Those links do help out the channel at no extra cost to you. So we have uh, TA in the pivot, that's a good start, but it immediately falls apart because everything else is T6. The body screws are T6. By the way, you have two standoffs here towards the back, no backspacer, so that helps with the weight as well. So those those uh, screws there are T6. The pocket clip, T6 as well. So. Uh, for the most part, you know, on a premium knife like this or a higher scale, this is not a budget knife by any means, but uh, at this level, you know, we typically like to see T6 on all the hardware, I'm sorry, TA on all the hardware uh, all around, especially for the price. This one comes in around $160, so you have premium steel, premium handle materials and everything. So T TA would have complemented this very, very well, in my opinion. Is it a deal breaker? Well, it really depends, right? For you, I mean, if you're okay with T6, which just, you know, at T6 versus T8 just means how much torque, how much pressure when turning uh, the, you know, the screwdriver, when, when loosening or tightening the screw, it just means how much pressure can you put on it before you strip the screw or the bit. Well, hopefully you have some good quality bits. Uh, and, you know, the, the bigger the hardware, like T8 or T10, the more solid, those teeth are right that's mainly the the consensus in the edc knife community so the bigger the hardware typically right the better but from what i understand concept and i, I saw this on lefty edc's video uh concept you know does it their own way they're pretty keen i guess on doing t6s on body screws and things like that so it just will come down to your preference if anything uh that being said what else is there that we haven't uh, talked about so a couple of other uh, negatives is anything and this is just personal preference so it's not like it's a deal breaker or anything we talked about the t6 uh, i noticed there's no jimping on the spine of the blade that's more of a personal preference for you this is more of like an elegant gentleman knife so you're not going to be doing like crazy task with it i wouldn't think so the jimping on the blade even though it would have been preferred right it's a little slipper here when i put my thumb on it even though it would have been preferred, right? It doesn't, I feel like it would take a little bit away from the design, right? Same principle here as the Integra. They also didn't do jimping here on this one, on the spine of the blade. So, you know, it's more of a, it will come down to your personal preference, I guess, if anything. Uh, the other thing too, and Lefty pointed this out also in his video is uh, no jimping on the flipper tap, right? So you do have some jimping going on in the Integra. And I only keep going back to the Integra because it's another concept knife coming in around the same price. And this one is nice and jimp. Believe it or not, even the smallest or minimum amount of jimping is going to help when flipping the knife. Now, keep in mind, it's hard to fail this one because it does take out a significant portion from the knife itself. But still, right, a little bit of jimping could go a long way. And the other thing I noticed, right, even though ergonomically speaking, this is a very comfortable knife. The pocket clip does a really good job here because you barely feel it there. Um, and it has a good amount of tension to it, right? It's not the most deep carry. You still have about this much of the knife showing, right, from your pocket. So that's certainly something to keep in mind if you want the most concealable knife out there. This one might not be it. But if you're okay with it showing about this much from the pocket, then you're going to be just fine. But it is not reversible. So... You know, I'm not sure if they make a lefty version for this one, but there's no way to mount this guy on the left side. I feel like it's so easy to do, right? Check out the Vostid Raccoon, which I keep coming back to. Just put a little insert tab right with, with some screws and you're ready to flip the, the, the pocket clip if you need to for the lefties out there, which certainly exist in the world. So let's not ignore the fact that they are also into knives. Uh, as well so uh, from a writing perspective yes it looks nicer right on the show side to not have any other cutouts or additional screws but you know if that comes at the trade-off of lefties not being able to use it i don't know right it's more of a your personal preference there right if you're like obviously you could use it from the lefty right i can you know deploy it and close it just fine even with my non uh, no dis dexterity at all left hand whatsoever you can still do it here uh, the cutout stress relief on the lock bar was on the outside. Something that I've been noticing more and more is companies are doing the, 
this little stress relief cutout section on the inside instead of the outside. So that would look a little bit more elegant if we were in the inside instead of the outside. But again, these, these, these are just nitpicking for the most part, right? Like nitpicks here and there, it's a small uh, gripes, if anything. But other than that, I mean, the knife is really, really good. Love the action, love the acoustics, feels really good. Uh, there were a few times, right? There were a few times that I, I did find myself reaching for a thumb stud or some sort of the reverse deployment option. They did away with this one, just like they did away with all other deployment, op all other deployment options on the Integra because it's really challenging to do an elegant knife that tucks away the blade into the handle as much as possible, but also give you additional deployment options, right? Take the very popular Pyrite, for example. Yes, you have a cutout here where you can use for reverse flick. You can also thumb deploy it, but it's also at the expense of the blade sticking out a significant portion from the handle. So take it with a grain of salt, right? It's a little bit of a trade-off. If you are a fidget monster and you're looking for the most amount of ways to deploy your knife uh, out of any given knife, then the anomaly may not deliver on that department. But as a trade-off, it does deliver on a very elegant, you know, streamlined, narrow, as narrow as possible type of knife. So you do end up with a flipper as the only deployment option, but that was intentional, right? Because they are just trying to get those elegant lines trying to tuck away that blade completely out of the way as much as they possibly can so yeah uh, i feel like they did a really good job here right along aside from those very gripes or nitpicks that i pointed out uh this thing is a pretty good elegant edc knife very gentleman like i feel like this knife is not going to intimidate anybody right even if you were like soup carrying it to like a wedding or church or what have you right the blade isn't anything crazy the the knife lines are anything crazy the less the blade sticks out from the handle, right? The less, the less intimidating the knife will look. So that's exactly what you have here, right? They do say on the website that this is what they call anti-skid grip, and it's somewhat of an orange peel on the titanium, right? That is something that I noticed. It's hard to tell. The camera probably might not pick up on it as much, but it really helps, right? As compared to like a plain stainless steel handle, it might be a little bit more slippery on the hand. This one, because it has this anti-skid grip applied to it, makes it a little bit more grippy and less likely to slip out of your hands, which is nice. Let's check out the balance on this bad boy here. So it might be a little bit, honestly, right on the money, right? I feel like right where the finger, uh, index finger cutout is, that's exactly where the balance is, which is not bad, right? Good balancing here. Yeah, honestly, <clears throat> overall, a very elegant, very elegant uh, knife overall. Let's do a quick cutting test on this bad boy. Now, we did this during the unboxing. This is not a brand new knife out of the box or anything. So it definitely has seen some use. But with that in mind, let's see how we do here. Yeah, this thing is going to be a slicer uh, for sure. Right? So let's get some full slices going on. Of course, the moment I say that, I jinx myself. So let's start fresh here, shall we? Boom, there we go. Bam. There we go. Yeah, so could it probably use a little bit of stropping? Yeah, any knife that's seen any kind of use could use a little bit of stropping. That is uh, certainly a fact. But yeah, this thing is still cutting really, really well. It can do paper. Now, of course, let's check the cardboard. Remember when cutting cardboard, don't cut perpendicular like this, but rather at an angle. And it will look something like this. Yeah, I think about that makes a statement right there. <laughs> that flat grind S35VN steel, this thing is still holding a pretty good edge for not being, uh, you know, sharp out of the box. Imagine if you strop this thing, right? If you, if I actually strop this thing, it would probably take an even better edge and be even sharper, but certainly can cut paper and cardboard still, no issues. All right, you guys be the judge. You guys rate it in the comments from one through 10. How sharp is this guy? Well, there you have it, guys. That has been the concept anomaly, right? Very elegant, gentleman-like, very uh, gentleman knife, very sleek, right? Very nice and elegant lines to it, right? So honestly, highly recommend this guy. Keep in mind, it will be linked in the description along with any other knife you saw in this video. It does help out the channel when you purchase a knife using those links, but that is entirely up to you. And that is at no extra cost to you. 
and entirely up to you as well. Uh, really impressed with the performance on this one, right? Uh, very elegant, very good, easy to carry, very light, right? Fit and finish is really, really good. So Concept did a really good job here. I feel like this one, this design was a little bit more outside of Dirk Pinkerton's wheelhouse, but he also did a really good job here on the anomaly. So that being said guys let me know if i miss anything what questions do you have let me know in the comments down below if you haven't already smashed the like button this will be a great time to do so it does help this video reach a larger audience go ahead and subscribe if you aren't already i promise you'll be worth coming back for more and make nice content like this on a daily basis and if you want to support the channel a step further there is a link for patreon down below or you can support the channel here on youtube by becoming a channel member and you'll get access to exclusive perks Check out the review on the Integra if you haven't already. This one was another banger from Can from Concept as well. Uh, the review on this one is ready to go. I'll put a card for it right here for you guys to check that one out next. Thank you guys for all your love and support. I really love each and every one of you. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.